All right, Boilers, it's time. Uh, I want to welcome our very special guest tonight, the mother of Purdue basketball's star center and front-running candidate for National Player of the Year, Zach Eady, Julia Eady. Julia, thank you so much for joining us tonight. It was such an honor. You're welcome. It's uh, my um, pleasure. So I, I know your time's limited tonight. Uh, we'll get right into this. Can you give us any insight into what it's like to be the parent of, of not only like a division one big 10 basketball player at Purdue, but you know, the mother of a player who's getting massive national attention now, um, uh, you know, he's the leading candidate for national player of the year. Like, are you, are you traveling from Toronto to a lot of the games? Are you frantically clicking the news feeds and Twitters like us fans are? And, and, and you know, what's it like, watching all this unfold in front of you i mean and, and you get as nervous as we do oh <laughs> <during the game? laughs> uh, yeah great question it's it's been an amazing ride it's it's crazy zach's doing things that just you know he he goes by leaps and bounds the program embraces him he embraces the work he's just it's been so much fun uh, this year you know they're at a, a new a new group and they're all forming and it's it's cool because he's you know one of the the seniors, you know, older guys on the team, so he's got a, a, a different role that he seems to be really embracing. Um, you know, I, I love these guys. I've, I've I, you know, I'm a complete stalker, I gotta say. I, uh, you know, I've been to a ton of their games. Last year, I was driving to Minnesota and it was absolutely nuts. So yeah, I stay down here for part of the season. Um, first year, I think I just had an Airbnb for like three weeks and then last year it was six weeks and part. Three months and this year it's something along that lines so it's a lot of fun you know the first year was a bit weird with covid for sure so it's a bit different um and then you know last year it was different again all of a sudden there was new fans and then this year it's different again because he's in a different role and uh he's certainly making some waves the whole team's making waves i, I just, it's just so much fun and yeah in terms of being nervous yeah, crazy. The moms in general were all crazy. Some of the dads look at us and they're like, why are you so nervous? You're not the one playing. And we're like, I know, but that makes it worse. You can't get any of the energy out. So very nervous. If uh, if you watch me in the stands, unfortunately, my legs just like just jiggling the whole time. It's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot of fun though. So one of the questions that I have for you, because everyone always, when they talk about Zach, they talk about how he played hockey for most of his youth and didn't take, <laughs> and didn't take up basketball until he was in high school. Right. And it's kind of a bigger thing that you see uh, kids going, not finishing at like your typical four-year high school, but instead going to basketball academies. Uh, and my question for you was, how did you and your family come to that decision to have Zach, who had just been playing basketball for maybe a year at this point, and make the decision to say, hey, you're going to go down to Florida. You're going to go to a foreign country and you're going to focus on playing basketball. Like kind of like what went into that? Like how tough of a decision was that as a family? I mean, in hindsight, it looks like that was a pretty good decision. I'm <laughs> uh, just curious about how decisions like that get made. Yeah, no, um, you know, Zach's always been very much the guy that wants to, to do the, to be the best of the best of whatever he's doing, if he, you know, if he can get there. And um, when he was younger, we had to sort of keep him to playing lots of sports because mostly because we didn't necessarily think that focusing in on one sport was the thing to do. And we just wanted him to love sport in general. And then when he um, got to higher and higher levels, we said, you know, listen, you can only do one a season. Like we, we got to narrow this down. And then so he picked um, hockey in the winter. And that's so mostly because we're in a hockey community. And then um, baseball in the summer. And even at hockey, you know, for the standards of where we live, he started late. Like we started him skating at six. And it was like, oh, everyone is all over us. Why aren't you starting him earlier? You know, so he started playing um, with GTHL, which is the Toronto League, um, when he was eight. And we were getting lots of like, you guys are starting him way too late. And it was, it was fine, you know, we just didn't necessarily see the need for it. But, um, you know, as he got into competitive sport, he absolutely, he's just got a competitive spirit and um, he's just kind of built that way. So um, by high school, we said, you know, we, we can't have you playing these high levels at both of these, both of these sports. You got to pick one. 
Um, and so his last year of hockey was grade eight, and then he picked baseball. So in grade nine, he was actually, we, we had him at a baseball school. Like he was really serious. And we said, okay, you know what, let's, let's see how you look doing this. And then um, grade 10, when he said, hey, you know, we had had him not playing hockey for the season. We realized how kind of restless he was in the winter and how he was underfoot. And we were like, okay, you know, maybe we should let him play some sports. So he said, I want to play some of the school sports. I'll try out for the basketball team. <laughs> and he was only seven feet. So I don't know. If it was a pretty long shot whether they were going to take him, quite honestly. And then he, um, so he, he, of course, you know, he made that team. And even then, quite honestly, he didn't take to a duck to water. He was completely still engaged in the baseball. He didn't really get into the basketball in any serious way until he played a little bit more seriously. And then I think that fired up his competitive spirit because when he was playing on the high school team, it was, you know, a little bit ridiculous because the school he was at wasn't, isn't a basketball school at all. Um, yeah. And then it just kind of, it just really took off. He played baseball. Uh, he was still playing baseball that season. And then as the season went on, it was just too much because then the Canadian men's team or actually the cadet team, he was starting to look at that. And we said, you know, this is a lot of stuff while you're still doing all season, not baseball. And then when IMG came along, they, it was strange. We didn't expect him to go to, we, you know, he talked about one of the States. We said maybe in grade um, 12 and maybe he'll do a postgrad year. That was what we were thinking. And then IMG contacted us, you know, after he'd been into it less than a year and we had to make the decision. And actually it was mostly Zach's decision. I mean, his dad and I talked about it, said, how comfortable are we with this? You know, he's a young guy. This is scary. He's going to be going into, the, like you say, another country and a sport that he's been playing not that long and into a sport that is very, you know, an American sport. It's not like he was coming down to play hockey or something, you know, so it was, you're going to be going into the, you know, really into the, the, the lines kind of thing. And um, he himself said, you know, like we asked him, what do you think? And he said, I'm going to, I'm going to be, I know I'm going to be homesick. Like that was his big thing. He was very, he's very realistic about things. He said, I'm going to be homesick. So I may as well get out of the way. So grade 12, I can, you know, kind of kill it. And we're like, okay, well, let's give this a shot. But I got to tell you, when I dropped them off, when we dropped them off, I cried all the way home. <laughs> we were driving home and I just thought, what have we done? Like, this is insane. And, uh, and then when we crossed the border, fresh tears, I cried like crazy again. It was, it was hard. It was definitely hard. Just, but um, a lot of it is just believing in him and him believing in himself and knowing that nothing's irreversible. You know, if, you, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. You don't want to go into it with any regrets, really. That's great. Um, my question is, we've heard so much this season about Zach developing as a leader and all of the leadership that he's doing on and off the court. And I just wondered if that's something that you've seen naturally in Zach all along, or is it something that's just developed more as a time, over time since he's had to step up now as he's an older guy on the court? And how much of that he's kind of picked up from working with Coach Painter? Um, I'd say it's probably a blend of all of those things. There's, you know, an immaturity that's come along with him. His confidence has gone up, um, you know, as he's gotten to know the sport. You know, in the beginning, he was he was really a fish out of water. Um, you know, you've probably heard him say that he resisted playing basketball when he was younger because it was just too predictable for him. Um, but, you know, when he played hockey and when he played baseball, he was always a very, you know, just a – Kind of the way he is, he's, he's a little bit, I know that people thought that when he was down here, you know, he seems like he's really stoic because he's kind of quiet, he's just pretty steady, you know, um, I actually see some of the same kind of um, characteristics in some of the other players that are on the team, they're just kind of quiet, steady guys, you know, they're not flashy, like this team is a very steady team, you know, in my opinion, and um but I think that as his confidence has gone up and Pain Coach Painter's put a lot of confidence into him and, you know, a lot of faith in him. And he's had a really wide, you know, variety of experience at this point in a very short period that's made him decide, I'm going to have to either believe or, or not, you know, kind of a thing. So it's he's grown right into it. I think there's a, a blend of all of those pieces. You know, he has a bit of a natural maybe-ness to it, but he's not necessarily the vocal leader. You know, you see like Mason and Ethan, they're real, you know, kind of teachers. Zach's more of kind of like, I'll just do and I'll just show you and, you know, it's up to you if you want to follow or not. 
Yeah, I think that's I I think that's great. Um, just the way seeing them all interact on the court is awesome, honestly. Um, but one of my favorite things during the games is when the camera goes to you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're on Julia watch. <laughs> I think I'm, um, I'm glad I can't see the, uh, what's happening on the feed, honestly, because uh, I don't know what I do. I My question really for you is like kind of who goes to games with you? Who's sitting with you guys and like what family means to all of you guys? It's a variety. Um, you know, the first year with COVID was really tough. Um, I braved it a lot just myself because logistics, you know, Canada had its borders very closed. Uh, but someone, you know, I, I, I played a bit of basketball myself. So when he played the sport, I was so happy. I was like, oh, my God, OK, this is a sport I really get. Um, so, you know, it's it's kind of just something that I really understand and I have a lot of fun that. So, you know, for sure, it was a lot of myself masked up and that was good. It was kind of a quiet way to get to know the team. You know, the parents have always been great. You know, the first year I remember Bridget Hunter or Junior is, I, I love her. She's, you know, and Zach had said, Eric's one of the nicest guys that he's, he's ever met. So, you know, um, so it was good. There's always been a really inclusive feel in terms of the, the team and the parents, you know. Um, and then the second year, I guess last year, was still mostly me because Canada was in and out of a lot of waves and Canada's handled the COVID situation a lot differently than we have in the States and the border was closed. So, you know, the first last year it was a bit tricky only because you didn't know whether or not you had to cross back and tests. And there was a lot of logistics kind of a thing. So that's why I ended up staying down here for a, a bunch of time. And then this year I'm having, you know, a variety, like there's a bit of a pent up my family, my, my brother and sister-in-law are going to be coming in January. Uh, we have some family friends that have come to a few of the games. My cousin's down here with me now. She was with me in Portland along with uh, her son. And it was funny because she was with me in Portland. She's a real sports, um, like, loves sports. And um, said, wow, this is, you know, quite the atmosphere. And I said, yeah, U.S. sports are different than Canada to start with. And I said, but you ain't seen nothing until you get to Mackey. And we were at Mackie and her and her uh, son were just like, oh my God, this is another, you know, next level. They had so much fun at it. It was, it was you're awesome. Speaking, so, you know, you're it doesn't get any better than Mackie, really. You're speaking to the heart of Purdue fans right now by oh. saying you just won everybody over. Well, did you see the dunk count that the paint crew put up? They put up a new sign. They put it, did you notice it? They put it up last game. I was there, but I did not notice it. I was too involved in the game. What, what well, was it? Yeah, so in the summer, I, I decided to be, a, you know, the goofy mom that I am. And I had sent out a message as a joke saying that I thought that they should learn a couple of bars in old Canada. And maybe now that we had two seven-footers, they should put on a dunk count. So they were like, oh, that sounds like a kind of a cool idea. And didn't really hear much about it. And then... Um, Zach had some other guys over to one of my place, one of my Airbnbs. They come over once in a while for a home cooked meal. And then I was, Caleb had put this insane put back dunk. I can't even remember what game it was. And I said to Caleb, we need that dunk count. And he was like, what are you talking about? So I told him, I said, I'm trying to get us a dunk count. What do you think? And he was like, you know what? The guards have the three count. Yeah, you know what? The bigs should get a dunk count. We should totally do that. And I said, okay, maybe I'll do a little another nudge. Pink crew was all over it. They were like, we don't have it ready yet. They were, it was really sweet. And then um, last before last game, they said, it's ready. It's, you're going to see it. And um, so it's over where they put the threes. But instead of it just been, being a bunch of threes, they have a sign that says um, number of dunks in Mackie. And because uh, at first I wasn't sure how they were going to count it. And so it's just a, a steady count of the number of dunks in Mackie over the season, I guess. It's it's very cool. That, that's awesome. So the, so the one dunk, uh, in the last game where he did it over two other individuals. Harris <laughs> looking up. That should have got like three or four, <laughs> four points on it itself. That was pretty awesome. well, That one was a little insane, I have to admit. I, I'm i kind of sleep, secretly hoping those cameras didn't catch me because that one I was like, wow! I, I, I completely, you know, jumped up and lost it. It was so much fun to see him do that. It was, it was fun. Yeah. So you mentioned just earlier that you – played basketball growing up a little bit yeah yeah and you were excited when zach took to it so if we were to organize a tournament of all the (laughs) boiler mom one-on-one who who do you think is coming out on top 
we're not counting Neil Ivy anymore, right? Because like that's just hands no, down. We're not even discussing that anymore. You no, see, Neil would be the final boss if you ended yeah. up winning. Yeah. You could see if you were able to score against her. <laughs> I wouldn't even dare. Huh. Uh, huh. I have to think about that one. I don't know. It's an interesting question. I, you know, the moms are all basketball moms for sure. How many of them actually have played? I'm not too. Sure, and I, I didn't play until I was in grade nine. I was a little bit on the Zach side of things, and it was you know, I went into grade, I was in grade eight, I was five foot nine, and my older brother, who's only five nine, was like, Come on, you gotta, you gotta play. So I, I started late too. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Um, I'd have to think, I, I'm gonna refrain from answering that question. That's a dangerous That's one. A good answer. That's a good answer. <laughs> that is the, that is the political answer no one can be upset about it i'm very canadian what can i say <laughs> julia i think we i've got one more serious question for you and then audra's probably going to lead us out here with a, right. a ending so zach was obviously heavily under recruited now i mean we look back and everybody knows that now. Right. he did have interest from some other high majors right i don't know about offers but ultimately what was why purdue what was the decision to go to Purdue? You know, what what was the draw? What was the appeal? Um, it's an interesting question because yeah, he 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 appears to be underrated. That was a little bit. I have to admit, I think we probably had a slightly accidental or slightly intentional hand in that, only because um, he reclassified really late. So he, we planned him to. He planned to come out as a twenty twenty one. We went to the NCAA camp in twenty twenty. Um, and it was kind of, we went to, Baylor was after him. And so we went to Baylor and they were saying, you know, why wait till 2021? And we're like, yeah, I don't know. You know, kind of thought about it. Some offers were starting to come and he was getting a bit of attention. And, um, and then we were, Purdue had seen him at the camp too. So they were interested, but they were interested in this as a 2021. Cause as you know, you know, you guys had a, a stack of 2020s. I think that they were looking at at that point. And then, um, so when we reclassified him, that caught, I think, some people off guard a little bit. And he was still very off the radar, you know, to be honest as well. Um, and then um, what happened was we were actually talking to his, IM, his IMG coach, was trying to steady the team, and he was trying to get the guys placed. And he said to me, you know, called me, and he said, you know, what's Zach's dream school? And Zach and I had been talking about it. Like, you know, where would he like to see an offer? Because Baylor was very interesting. I mean, i got to be honest, they, they were a really good program. Um, and then he, uh, but we were waiting. I had said to the Baylor coach, like, listen, we just need a really good comparable for him. And, um, you know, there was another big 10 school that was after him, but we weren't that keen on it. And then, um, you know, we said, you know, Purdue was, was one of them. And one of the, the two schools that we would love to see if they were interested at all. And it was a funny story because what happened was um, he's like, okay, Purdue, that's an interesting choice. You know, I guess most kids are always like, yeah, no, I want to be at Kentucky or Duke or, you know, like that's the really shiny one. So he thought Purdue was an interesting choice. And he said, you know what, that's a, an interesting fit. Like, that's a great fit. I'm surprised that that's what you guys kind of come up with out of the blue. And then, um, so it was a funny story. He knew somebody, I don't even know who it was. He was reaching out to them, but he was on the plane um, he he told me I sent a text to them, but you know I'm maybe on the plane, maybe on airplane mode. He said by the time he landed, there was a message back already from Purdue that I crossed when he, they had sent him a text while he was sending them a text, basically in the air. And they landed, and they were like, "Hey, what about Edie?" And so it was like, "Oh my God!" Well, then let's go check it out. And uh, so you know when we came to campus, we were in a flurry of visits at that point. It was just before his senior year, and we were you know thinking that we were going to just have him come out as a 2020, but we weren't sure yet. And then um, when he came down, it was, you know, it was funny. Like I said, we were in a few visits. The whole visit thing is fun, but it's exhausting. And, you know, from a Canadian perspective, it's a little overwhelming. And Zach's, like I say, he's a steady kid. He doesn't really like a lot of, you know, stuff kind of going on. He just wants to know what he's, like, once he gets his eyes on the prize, he just... He's, that's what he wants to do. You know, he doesn't want to be kind of all the distraction. So um, we came down to Purdue and it was a bit more of the vibe than anything else. I mean, in terms of recruiting, you know, it's a, it's a steady program. The facilities are good. You know, he, he really liked the team. He really liked the coaches. 
Um, the facilities were, were as good as what, what else we'd seen. Um, and, uh, you know, he was excited about being maybe in a school that was about basketball too, like in a state that's about basketball rather than, you know, in a state that's, that's about football, let's just say. Yeah. And um, it was just, he, he felt like it was the fit. And it was funny because after the visit, he said to me, you know, like, hmm. you know, kind of like I'm sort of thinking that this, this felt pretty good considering he'd been pretty serious about another school. And then um, he decided to, to go down to his final three. And then he asked me too, he said, you know, so do you have a favorite of my three? And I said, yeah, I do. And he said, well, which one is it? And I said, I'm not telling you until you tell me what you picked. <laughs> so um, he said, okay, I'm going to tell you in a couple of days. And then a couple of days later, he said, okay, so mom, I'm thinking Purdue. And I said, oh, I've got to tell you, that's the one I liked too. So it was pretty cool. Um, yeah, so it just was a, a, a general fit feeling for him. And it was, it was interesting because I think part of it was um, Painter can be painfully blunt, which I thought was maybe going to throw off Zach a bit, but I liked it as a mom. I was like, this guy's the real deal. Like, you know, he's, he's telling Zach what he wants and, you know, what, what he really thinks. But Zach's a tough kid in terms of what he thinks. He doesn't really want to hear, you know, stuff that he thinks is what you want to hear, tell him, you know, sort of thing. So he, he, it was, it was cool. He just said, you know, that felt very honest to me. And uh, I think that that's somewhere that I can work with. And I was like, okay, cool. Let's do it. Well, the only thing I said to him is, do you want to go back to Four Seasons? Because he'd been in Florida. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Finding him pants that were long enough, I didn't have to do that for two years. I was so happy, and then I was like, "Oh my god, I'm gonna have to find him pants again. This is painful." <laughs> so uh, he said, "Yeah, I'm ready for snow again." I said, "All right." He said, "I miss it a bit." I said, "All right." Well, let me tell you, we're we're damn glad he chose Purdue. So, <laughs> so are we. <laughs> uh, Audra's got one one lighthearted question for you, and then we'll let you get out of here. Sounds good. Yes. Um. Uh, I think we probably all saw uh, after, I, I want to say it was Gonzaga, but it may have been Duke, but you posted a picture of a pint of beer. And I was <laughs> like, my girl. <laughs> and I need to know, what is your, what is your post-game choice of beer? Well, you know what? It's funny. For the first time during this, um, like I don't have the Airbnb that I'm already staying at yet. I'm, I'm starting in January to be down here kind of full time. So right now I have, have been doing a lot of traveling back and forth. Um, and because my cousin's down here, she actually was staying here, here, down here in West Lafayette. And I was like, okay. So she said, you know, stay with me. So the first time I've had Boiler Gold, I have to say it's a pretty decent beer. I, I was impressed because, you know, Canadians, we do like our beers and engineers or like I'm a retired engineer. So we tend towards beer as well. So uh, I gotta say it's, it was a okay with me. Good choice. Good choice. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Julia, thank you real quick before I let you go. Will you make a promise that when, not if, when, uh -oh. when producing the final four this year, you'll come back and do another show with us. <laughs> I think I can make that promise, and I like the when. I think that that sounds really great. Okay. Sounds like a deal. You're you're awesome. You're a great follow on Twitter. We we really <laughs> appreciate you coming on tonight. And I'm sorry that we ran over our time here a little bit, but you're all good. Again, thanks for coming on tonight. And, no, I appreciate uh, the support. All right, thank you, Julia. Okay, take care, guys. Yep. Thanks. Thank Pleasure you. Pleasure talking to you. Bye. Yeah. Well, guys. Um, Julia Eady's pretty awesome. I don't know what you think, but uh, she's a, she's a good interview, and and um, and I wish I could I wish we could have her on here every night. She was great. I completely agree. Yeah, she's that'll, awesome. um, that'll be, uh, there'll be something for everyone there. That was cheap. Yeah, that's good stuff. Um, we're still we're still recording here. I don't think we have any any follow up on that except for uh, you know. Uh, Purdue plays Hofstra tomorrow. I don't know what the if there's a line out on that game. So yeah. well, it sounds like Hofstra. Let me look quick. I've I, Hofstra is probably one of the better, like not major schools we're playing in the non-conference. Uh, Hofstra, well, yeah, nineteen and points. And and a half. So hopefully it's a snooze. Hopefully we have no need to do a live space tomorrow. 
especially because it's on BTN Plus. Oh yeah, that'll be yeah. Uh, so, with that said, uh, thank you all for joining tonight. Thanks for thanks for uh, to my co-hosts and thanks to everybody that's that's watching this on a recording. Um, on behalf of Riles, Audra, and Carrie. I'm Habitual Boiler. Thanks for tuning in to Boiler Up, Beer Down, and we'll catch you next time. Go Boilers. <laughs>